Okay, so it's another ghost video, sorry. Um, I shot a video the other day, I think for Marion Williamson, that um, was fine all the way through. So I don't know. This is a Huawei Honor 8. So if any of my viewers know if there's a fix for this or if I need a new phone, then please let me know. Um, I don't want to buy a new phone because then I have to transfer all the files and then I'm going to confuse myself and I have all kinds of stuff then that I have to remember because everything's in my phone. Anyway, um, this, I have been watching a lot of interesting YouTubers and I had just done a dedication to Brian Rowe the other day and I wanted to make this one kind of um, to honor another YouTuber who I also discovered through the kind of uh, Marion Williamson labyrinth. Um, and this is Amy Aimless from Tennessee. And I will link to her channel um, down below so that you can check out her videos. She's a very interesting YouTuber, kind of a political comedian, um, and of, I would say philosopher. Um, and she was just talking about uh, different things. I think she finds political correctness quite irritating, especially um, uh, feminism and sort of the social justice warriors who, I mean, I kind of know what she's talking about because I, I do find that there's an aspect of social justice warriors where they just kind of copy a script and they um and then there's it's like this religion like when most people are talking about religion they, they're just talking about anything that involves faith but when i when i say the word religion i'm actually talking about when people adopt a um, code of ethics with a lot of do's and don'ts and they follow it blindly without thinking about it to me that is actually very symptomatic of religion and you can find that as much in the science community as in the faith community um, or uh, the right, the left, everywhere, political, any, any place in the political spectrum, you can find fanaticism and blindness. Um, I actually wanted to, this is sort of a response, because um, Aimless had talked about feminism, and I was kind of laughing because I identify as a feminist. And one of the reasons that I identify as a feminist is because of women like aimless. I love women that do not get in line. I love women that are totally themselves. I I think I was like, I was kind of always like this, like I was always inspired by female characters in stories, in movies, in books, um, and in my life. Um, especially if they were odd or not not, not odd has a negative connotation, but like just, you know, so completely original and kind of uh, obviously not giving a crap about what anyone thought about that. Uh, if anything, reveling in, in the kind of shock factor. And um, I mean, I liked Madonna, you know, and, and a lot of people think of Madonna as very mainstream, but you know, when she was doing her thing, she wasn't that mainstream. Um, it was kind of unusual, like she had to fight for even getting her face on her first record. But Madonna is not <clears throat> is not the best example. I would say that for me personally, the best example in music would have been Tori Amos. Like the fact that she writes a song where she has the audacity to address Muhammad as her best friend and then conspire with him that only her and Muhammad know that Jesus was a woman. I think he's fantastic. Uh, anyway, and I love women like Bjork who went to China and said free Tibet, um, which is just a completely outrageous thing to do. Um, and then all the kids in the audience were going, what's Tibet? Because you have to realize a lot of those kids were too young. Like if they're fans of Bjork, they probably don't know about the history of Tibet. 
And also, I have just discovered recently that um, Tibet is not called Tibet in China. It's called whatever provincial name they gave to it. Um, so if you say free Tibet, people are Chinese people, Han Chinese people are probably not going to know what you're talking about. Uh, so I wanted to kind of um, describe what my relationship with feminism is, which is not political in the dogmatic sense, at least I don't think it is. Um, I don't really care about... I remember seeing this thing in an Archie comic when I was 10, and they, they were depicting a feminist meeting kind of thing, and they had a poster on the wall that showed a woman in a bikini and a playboy, a, a bunny headband, headdress thing with a line through it and a circle and then a girl in a karate uh, karate costume thing and thumbs up next to it and I remember that really really bugged me because that was the exact opposite of what I think feminism is or should be um, of course as a man I really you know my opinion doesn't matter but I have as I've said before, opinions about everything. I don't know where they come from. I don't ask for them, but they're they're in my head and I'm putting them onto YouTube to get them out. <laughs> so if they bother you, I'm sorry. And you can let me know in the comments and I'll d try to discuss them with you politely. Uh, yeah, because it reduces it to the two dimensional, like as if this is feminist and this isn't. And I hate that. The whole, the, the things that I like are, are not like that pigeonholed. The things that I like are like, I mean, I, I remember seeing, um, I'm, I'm gonna mention a lot of references to films here. I remember seeing a film when I was 10 years old, uh, The Witches of Eastwick. And I remember someone in a grocery store, store called Susan Sarandon's character a slut. I was 11 years old, I didn't know what the word meant. But something in me went, yes! <laughs> slut you go girl <laughs> I just loved it I loved the whole sound of it I knew it was something bad but not bad like I was I was like so kind of riled up as soon as I heard that word and then uh, one of my favorite movies another one was um, Outrageous Fortune and when when Shelley Long is running away from the guy that's trying to kill her and it's her ex-boyfriend and uh, and she leaps across the chasm and does the splits I was like, just filled with this sense of empowerment, as if for me, but I mean, you know, I know that I'm a man, but I love, I just loved it. And, um, and the other one, which is very different, was um, the opening scene in the movie Blink with Aidan Quinn and Madeline Stowe, when he is trying to, she's playing the violin on stage and he's trying to get her attention and he's dancing and posing and then finally he shows his ass to the stage and all his friends are laughing at him because she's ignoring him and then she, she looks up from playing and you see that she's blind and um i don't even know what that means or why i liked it so much <laughs> but it was like just illustrated something about the futility of trying to impress people in a in a kind of juvenile way or something. I don't know. Like the, for me, that I mean, she was blind, so it was supposed to be like a joke. Like, what are you doing? You know, like uh, oh, bad luck for him. But um, but for me, it, it actually meant more than that. Like just the things that people do to try to impress people, and they're so missing the mark because when you're when you really want to impress someone, the first thing you have to do is actually tune into who they are and what they like. It's an em it's empathy, actually, that's attractive. So, um, and it's not like you act empathetic. You have to actually do it. So, and that's what's hard. Anyway, uh, that's a whole other point. But um, my image of women was very different from the cultural image of women when I was a kid because I my mother was very tough and independent. And my father, I don't seem to have based my opinion of men on my father for some reason because I thought that if you, 
I would not let my mother, I would not let a man cut my hair when I was a child. I thought that um, if you let a man near you with a, anything sharp, he would try to stab you. So um, I made my mother take me to the hairdresser salon for ladies and um, because I trusted women with scissors. And then one day a woman stabbed me in the neck with a pair of scissors accidentally. <laughs> and my mother was on the floor laughing. Um, which is kind of heartless actually, but um, but she was like, I told you women can be bastards. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm off on a terrible tangent. So my impression of women when I was a kid was that they were detached actually and that they were very cool and reserved and removed and that men were very needy and always chasing women and kind of obnoxious. Like I thought of women like cats and men like dogs pretty much. And also my, my mom's friends were kind of like fit that model. And then when I grew up, I kind of learned that, that there's also this stereotype about women who get very attached and want um, relationship all the time and men are always trying to be free. And I kind of didn't know about that until much later. So, but I remember always being very inspired by the image of women as very distant and removed. Um, and I mean, it's, I don't know. I kind of think that this is a thing that gay men get into. I don't know why, but there is some kind of um, inspiring element to female empowerment that appeals to gay men. And um, I'm sure that many people think it's because we have a woman inside us or whatever, but I don't think it's as simple as that. Um, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> And uh, anyway, so was there any other movies that I wanted to mention? Because I think I've actually like nearly run out of my point, completely distracted myself into a stupor. Um, no, I think that's it. I'm sure I will think of things later. But um, oh, Ani DeFranco. Um, musically, it took me a long time to get into her because the sound, I, I was always very superficial. I always listened to melodies first and it, she was kind of the first artist that I really started to listen to lyrics. And uh, I think it's amazing, not only that, I think her music is quite good and I think she's a very good lyricist, but the most amazing thing is that I think she is the only artist that I've ever heard of who has launched their own record company successfully without signing a deal with, like a distribution deal with another record company. So I think that's kind of quite astounding really. And sort of very exemplary of the grassroots movement. So I think that's very cool. Yeah, I thought I had more to say than I do apparently. So I'm gonna leave this here and spare you all from the ghost, which is probably harmful for your brain. So, um, Bye for now. <laughs>